Hi, this is naturalist Shannon Pennington with the Warren County Park District. Welcome to our YouTube channel and our Brood 10 Cicadas program. We'll be talking about the Great Eastern Brood, which is going to emerge here anytime now in Southwest Ohio this spring of 2021. Sometimes you might hear cicadas being referred to as locusts, but they're actually not locusts at all. This dates back several hundred years from when the pilgrims first came to North America. When they came across these large swarms of insects, the closest thing they had to relate it to were the locusts that they had read about in the Bible. But now we know they're not locusts at all, and if we take a closer look, you can see why. They're completely separate orders and families altogether. Locusts are short-horned or short-antennaed grasshoppers that eat leaves and other soft plant tissue. They have long bodies, large rear wings, and long hind legs that are excellent for jumping. On the locusts, their lifespan is up to one year, and they can significantly damage crops because they eat everything on the plant, and they can travel up to 100 miles a day. The cicadas, on the other hand, these are our true bugs. They're from a completely separate order and family altogether. They only eat xylem or the sap or fluid of trees and shrubs so they don't go after crops at all and they don't eat leaves they have a short body large eyes clear wings and larger front wings and their lifespan can be up to 17 years they can cause some flagging on trees but it's not the same thing as decimating a crop they also generally stay within about 150 feet of the place where they emerge from the ground. You might be wondering what the big deal is. We have cicadas in Ohio every summer. So why is this any different? Well, the cicadas that we have in Ohio in a normal summer are known as the annual or dog day cicadas. They come out a little bit here, a little bit there. They're fairly large. They don't cause a lot of disruption. The cicadas that we have coming up this year are part of brood 10. They are periodical cicadas that have been under the ground in a nymph phase for the last 17 years. So they're completely different species. There's a difference in size and coloration. You'll notice the one on the top, that's our annual or dog day cicadas. It's quite a bit larger than the periodical cicadas that we have coming this summer. The ones that we have this year from brood 10 are about an inch to an inch and a half long, and they have those bright red eyes, so very easy to discern from any other species. So their life cycle timing is different, but they do have the same feeding and breeding habits, so those are the same. The thing is, the periodical cicadas are coming out in huge quantities all at the same time. This is known as a brood. So what is a brood? These are periodical cicadas of the same life cycle type that emerge in any given year at the same time. That's what is called a brood or a year class. There are 15 broods in the eastern United States and they either have a 13 year or a 17 year life cycle depending on which brood it is that we're looking at. You may notice that 13 and 17 are both prime numbers. Scientists think that the reason this happens is because with most other species, they go through a life cycle that is every two years or perhaps every five years. And when you compare that to a 13 or 17 year life cycle, they don't line up very well with any other um, emergence of any animal at the same time. So this is a survival strategy for the cicada. The one that we have coming out this year is brood 10. You might see it marked down as brood X. The X is a Roman numeral, so it's 10. It's known as the Great Eastern Brood. And on our map, it's marked in red here. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look. This is what we're expecting this summer, brood 10. We are the red X there, right there in the center of all the action. So we should be seeing quite a bit of activity here coming up soon. So what do cicadas eat? Only one thing, sap or xylem from tree roots, twigs, and branches. When they're underground as nymphs, they focus on the roots. Once they emerge and they turn into adults, they will use a special body part it looks like a beak to get some sap or xylem out of twigs and branches, but they don't eat leaves like locusts do. They just need it to stay hydrated so they can reproduce and complete their life cycle. And what eats cicadas? Well, what doesn't eat cicadas? 
everybody apparently likes to eat cicadas including spiders mantids and wasps especially the cicada killer wasp that's pictured here on your left these guys are huge and they're loud and they kind of seem scary but they only go after cicadas. They're super cool because the moms will lay an egg inside of the cicada's body and then let go, and the cicada flies away. Meanwhile, the egg is developing inside the cicada's body. It hatches, and then it eats the cicada from the inside out, a built-in meal right for that baby wasp. Birds, including raptors, herons, and gulls, also love to eat cicadas. So do mammals like squirrels, possums, raccoons, moles, and bats. Reptiles like snakes and lizards, amphibians like frogs and toads, fish, dogs and cats, and even people like to eat them. Now I'm told that if you can catch an adult cicada emerging from its nymphal exoskeleton, like the one in the picture, that's when you want to try and eat them because their adult exoskeleton has not hardened yet, so they're not crunchy yet. You can apparently put them in any kind of dish, like you would use shrimp, for example. I'm told that they taste like cold canned asparagus. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. I'm going to pass. Let's take a closer look at the life cycle of a cicada. They go through something called an incomplete metamorphosis. That means that they do not have a cocoon or a chrysalis or a pupal stage. So first we have the eggs. They look like little bits of rice. When the eggs hatch, they're teeny tiny and they look almost like a termite. They'll go through five instars in this nymph stage. Over the course of their lifespan, they will shed their skin and a larger nymph will come out of that skin, leaving the old stuff behind. So that happens five times. This is what we're gonna see coming out of the ground here pretty shortly. And then that exoskeleton will split open and the adult will emerge. And finally, once the exoskeleton has hardened, this is what we're going to see, the adult cicada. So here's what we're going to notice. First, the nymphs are going to crawl out of the ground. Next, the nymphs are going to climb up to the trees and fence posts and buildings and latch on tight using their specially adapted front claws to cling on. Finally, the nymphs will molt one last time, and this time they emerge as an adult. They're going to leave behind their exoskeleton. So you may see these all over the place, but they're just the empty shells. So the adults will take to the skies looking for love and leaving their old exoskeletons behind. The males will use a special organ called a timbal to flex their muscles and buckle their ribs, making a loud maraca-like buzz. They are the ones that you're going to be hearing soon. The females don't have timbals, so they're not going to be able to make that buzzing noise. They will answer back by gently flicking their wings, which will make a snapping noise instead. Let's listen to some cicadas now. Next, the female will fly to the top of a tree, find a branch that's about the diameter of a pencil. She'll use a special body part called an ovipositor. It looks almost like a stinger, but it's not used for stinging. It's used more like a steak knife to slit open the branch and then she'll lay about 20 eggs inside the branch. They look like little tan pieces of rice, and she will do that over and over and over again. She'll lay about 500 of those eggs before she's finished, and then her life cycle is complete and she will die. Then the eggs will hatch. As I mentioned before, they look kind of like little termites. 
and they will fall to the ground. This is going to take place about six to 10 weeks after their eggs are laid. You won't even notice this part because they're so tiny. Once they go to the ground, they start digging underneath and we won't see them again for another 17 years. They're going to spend 13 to 17 years underground, depending on which kind of brood they're from. They'll molt five times, digging deeper each time, drinking the sap from roots, and then the entire process starts over again. Well, can they hurt us? This is something that I get asked a lot because they are kind of intimidating. They're big bugs and they have those creepy red eyes, but no, they can't hurt us. They are loud. They can buzz by your head. They might startle you, but they don't bite. They don't sting. They don't carry diseases. They can be kind of annoying, but they're not dangerous. And they're also fascinating. Well, can they hurt trees? They might cause something called flagging, but it's really not a huge deal. If the tree is young, maybe if you've planted it within the last year or two, you can protect the upper branches using a lightweight fabric like tulle or cheesecloth and just wrap that up nice and loosely so that the moms can't get onto the branches to slice into there and lay her eggs. If the tree is older and well established, it should be uh, strong enough to withstand any, store, any sort of egg laying and it should be just fine. Can they help trees? Believe it or not, the answer is yes. When they're in their nymphal stage and they're digging around, going from root to root, they're aerating the soil, creating those tunnels, making it easier for the tree roots to get the oxygen and water that they need. Plus that flagging that we talked about, that's a natural pruning process. So what happens is when the mom slices into the branch to lay her eggs, it may cut off the xylem supply to the end of that branch. It could cause the end to sort of break a little bit and the tops of the trees might look a little bit affected. They might turn brown. However, what that means is that all of the xylem that's in that plant still is being concentrated in a smaller area, meaning that next year you're going to see trees producing more flowers and fruits. Finally, the dead insects' bodies add nutrients, especially nitrogen, to the soil when they decompose. So that produces um, better nutrition for the trees so they can grow even stronger in years to come. So what should we expect in Southwest Ohio this year? We can start to see animals digging for nymphs between mid-March to early May. We're going to notice chimneys and holes appearing in the, so in the soil. That's in the upper left-hand corner there. That'll happen in mid-April into the beginning of May. The nymphs will start to emerge in between early May to end of May. The singing, this is the part you're gonna notice the most. This will be mid-May through mid-June. It will be really loud. The egg laying is going to take place, and this is when you're gonna to wanna to protect your young trees, the end of May through mid-June. You'll notice flagging of the trees. That's that picture on the far right in the center, those dead bits at the end of the trees, um, at the end of the branches. You'll start to notice that June through August-ish. Finally, the eggs are going to hatch in July through August, but by this time, the adults will be long gone, they'll be silent, and you won't even notice it happen. How are we going to stay sane during brood 10 emergence? First of all, invest in some earplugs. These guys can be really noisy. Their sound levels have been recorded at over 100 decibels. So if you're gonna be spending quite a bit of time outside in May and June, um, you may wanna invest in some decent earplugs. Stay away from other loud vibrating things like mowers and leaf blowers, car engines, um, air conditioning units. The males are attracted to those. They tend to cluster in areas where other things are making noises like they make. So if you're gonna be outside, stay away from other loud vibrating things. And remember, it lasts only about six weeks altogether. So it's going to be loud, it's going to be annoying, but it's also gonna be absolutely 
fascinating. Think about what you're going to be doing 17 years from now. Picture that. Maybe save a few of those exoskeletons for your children or grandchildren to look at so they'll know what to expect next time Brood 10 emerges. And finally, you can be a citizen scientist by helping Dr. Gene Kritsky from Mount St. Joseph University in Cincinnati. He's widely considered to be the world's foremost expert on periodical cicadas. And he has a free app called Cicada Safari that allows normal everyday people to take photographs of the cicadas that you're seeing in your yard and upload them so that he and his research assistants can have better data and they can learn even more about cicadas. Thank you for joining me today for our YouTube presentation on Brood 10 Cicadas, the Great Eastern Brood. To learn more about the Warren County Park District, visit our Friends of Warren County Park District website at fwcpdoh.com. Thank you.